Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make any purchasing or architecture decisions based on our generally available features and information, and not on any forward-looking statements that may be made during this presentation. This video brought to you by AppExchange Technical Enablement. Welcome to Flexible Version Management, the fifth video in the 2GP Deep Dive Features and Use Cases series. These videos provide an in-depth look at the features and use cases for second generation packaging. Now, the third feature we'll cover is probably the most important but least understood thing in all of 2GP, and that's flexible version management. Now, heads up, this feature video is a little bit longer than the other ones in this playlist, but I promise that it's worth the time. In fact, once you understand the value of flexible version management, you'll see why I think that this is the superstar feature of 2GP, even if multiple packages in a single namespace is the feature that usually gets all of the attention. Now, to really understand the value of flexible version management in 2GP, it helps to quickly look at how linear package versioning works with 1GP. So imagine a partner who's published a golden master of their app at version 0.5. In other words, it's something that they want customers to install. And great news, feedback's been really positive, and they've got a backlog full of features that could easily take them to version 1.5 and beyond. So one of their development teams, let's call them Dev Team A, goes to work and starts building new features. And once they hit their stride, they upload package 0.6 and then 0.7, and all the while they're careful to upload only managed beta package versions. And hey, during development, that's the right way to do things because it gives them flexibility in case they need to remove anything from their package. Now let's say there's a second development team, we'll call them Dev Team B, and they want to build an experimental feature, and they've already got plans to test it with a small group of pilot customers. So they build a couple of versions, only this time the lead engineer from Dev Team B unilaterally decides to upload managed released package versions instead of managed beta. Now, maybe they're new and they didn't realize what they were doing, or maybe they thought that avoiding beta packages would make their pilot run smoother, since managed released packages actually let you upgrade, while managed beta packages, you know, you'd have to uninstall them before you could install newer versions. And that would have been a pain for their pilot customers. So, you know, I get it. The problem is that what happens if the pilot customers don't like, don't want, or don't need the feature being developed? Well, you know, now Dev Team B is stuck because they're going to need to roll those packages back to beta in order to remove those experimental features that the customers don't want. Only now, there's a new problem. Dev Team A is ready to go with their next beta release, but they're blocked until Dev Team B opens a case with partner support, gets their packages rolled back, and removes all the unwanted feature metadata, and only then can Dev Team A actually get back on track and drive towards the next customer release, which will be version 1.0. Now, hopefully everyone learned from this experience and from this point forward, both teams are more careful to work sequentially. But unfortunately, sequential while safer is a lot less agile. So the overall velocity of both dev teams goes down. Now, finally, if any fixes are needed after version 1.5 gets released, the partner can create patch versions. And I mention this because to be fair, this is a nice little bit of nonlinear versioning here in the 1GP world, but it's really all there is and it's not that much, right? But so, so this is in general linear version management with 1GP. So let's see how flexible version management with 2GP might change this story. Now, to do that, we're going to look at the same hypothetical journey from customer release 0.5 all the way to 1.5, only this time we're using 2GP version numbers, which include that fourth spot for the build number. And you'll see in a moment how that comes into play. 
Like before, we've got dev team A, only this time they're going to build out the 0.5.0 line. And this means that the only thing changing between package versions is the build number. So their first package is going to be 0.5.0.1, and then their second package is going to be 0.5.0.2. And this is kind of cool, right? They're using that 0.5.0.next syntax to do all this. But other than that, this is not terribly exciting, right? Well, let's get Dev Team B back in the mix, and we'll see how that livens things up. Because like before, they want to build and deploy some experimental features, and they want to do it in the same 0.5.0 line of code that Dev Team A is working with. Now, with 2GP, they can actually label their builds as being part of a different branch. And in this case, one named feet underscore B or feature B. So when Dev Team B builds their first package version, they end up with the same 0.5.0.1 version number that Dev Team A got on their first build, but with the branch label in place, both of these versions can exist simultaneously. Now, we know from before that Dev Team B does like to kind of go their own way. So for the next package version that they create, they actually decide to increment the minor version to 0.6, and then they do it again to 0.7. But the good news for the rest of the team is that with flexible version management, those version number choices aren't terribly consequential yet. All the really important stuff with version numbers happens when you promote a package version out of beta and into the released state. The lead engineer of Dev Team B actually knows this, and once again, you know, they just unilaterally decide to promote their, their latest package. Only this time, they're blocked because the DevOps team has locked down the ability to promote package versions. This is something that's unique to 2GP. Package promotion requires a special perm that's assigned in the dev hub. And for the partner here in our hypothetical example, it's something that they've decided as an organization that they want to limit. Now, you'll notice that none of Dev Team B's activity has actually interfered at all with Dev Team A. In fact, they keep moving forward with their own package builds. So that when Dev Team B does get that eventual uh, inevitable news that their pilot customers don't like the experimental features, it has no effect on the other teams that are building in parallel. In fact, there's room for another team to take some of what Dev Team B did and develop their own take on it. And it's worth stopping for a moment to consider what's happened here. Three different teams, all working from a similar ancestor, have been able to work independently in parallel to create installable package versions. And this is a critical point because they're not just putting raw unpackaged metadata into DE or trial orgs. These installable package versions can be used as dependencies for other packages in development, they can be distributed to customers in search of feedback. They can even be used to test integrations. So now, when it's time to move towards an actual customer release, all three teams can work together on a source merge release. And they can do that by using the tools provided by their version control system. So Dev Team A and C, they collaborate to identify and address any merge conflicts in order to build 0.6.0.1, and then they iterate with 0.6.0.2, and now this next bit's important, because it doesn't matter that Dev Team B already used 0.6.0.1, or that they advanced the minor version to something you know, farther ahead, to 0.7 in the last build that they were working with. And that's because none of their package versions were ever promoted, and they were using that feature B branch label anyways. That means that the partner can simply abandon the entire line of packages that Dev Team B was working on. In fact, once all of these changes make it back up into the main customer release line, every team's package line will end up being abandoned because we're just doing another source merge up to 1.0.0.0. 
And that's how the partner ensures that there's a valid upgrade path for customers from 0.5 to 1.0. Now, the road to 1.5 and beyond is just a repeat of that multi-team parallel package development process that you just saw. And just like with 1GP, if patch releases are needed, all the partner has to do is build a package version with a non-zero integer in the patch spot of its version number. In other words, if you need to patch version 1.0, you just build a package with the version number 1.0.1. So that's flexible version management. So let's take a look at why developers, product owners, and DevOps folks should love flexible version management. So for developers, flexible version management makes it really easy to build and test a variety of features without hijacking the main product branch. That means it's, it's very simple to just abandon entire branches of code that don't work and then just move forward with what does work. And that's because useful changes get merged using source control and then you can just point that to the right ancestor. No special orgs or org tools needed to do that. Now for product owners, you know, this bolsters the creativity of your team because it takes the fear out of trying new things. That means that your engineers should be able to deliver faster and with more agility. And doing that leads to better quality and faster time to market for new features when you're building them out. Now for DevOps, specialized package version metadata like branch and then one I didn't talk about earlier, uh, which is called tag, these, these special fields on the package version let you tie every single package to a specific commit in your VCS. And this lets you know exactly what was packaged. The other thing is that package versions are always beta by default. And so when they're created, they're beta and you as a DevOps uh, engineer, you and your organization determine who's going to have the right to have the perm to promote those packages to a release state. And then also you get to keep package sprawl under control because you can delete unwanted beta package versions. No need to contact support to do it. You just use the CLI. To learn more about the features and use cases of second generation packaging, check out all of the titles in this video series. You can also use the 2GP Deep Dive Trail Mix to find additional resources about second generation packaging. Finally, registered Salesforce partners can join the Managed Packages group in the partner community. It's the best place to ask questions and get up to date information about first and second generation managed packages. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the great content by Salesforce developers.